Hello friends and welcome. So today I wanted to talk with you about some tools and techniques to make an energetic painting like this. Now, while it may seem like it might be a good idea to approach this painting with any sort of method or technique, there are some that can really enable the process to be much more free-flowing and um, you know there may also be some tools that are not necessary to make a painting like this and some that really may you know make more sense or even enable the process to be mm, more detached from thinking and um, you know, more, more present with just being creative and just painting. So what I have here are br some brushes. You know, these are some various kinds of brushes. Um, different, you know, different companies have made these um, from very, you know, um, well-known companies to just, you know, unknown companies like this brush here doesn't even have a name um this brush here you know this was made by utrecht and they're you know very well known in the art world and um they make everything from you know paint to paint brushes and um you know everything you could you could imagine for making making paintings um but really, what I wanted to say was, you know, this kind of brush is not necessary for making a painting like this. And in some ways, you know, it, it could be a little bit too nice. Um, this is a good brush for glazing, for fine paint applications, um, and that sort of thing where, you know, the process is much more detailed and needs to, you know, adhere to a sense of perfection. So with a painting like this, um, you know, that really adhering to a sense of perfection is not what it's about. It's about letting go of those sorts of things. So, you know, I just wanted to say that, you know, this kind of brush, um, you know, while it is it, extremely useful and um you know just a beautiful brush and a joy to use i use it for paintings like these um that really have more of a concept and um paintings that i really want to be perfect in many more ways um so i wanted to show you these brushes here and what I recommend is, you know, if you have some brushes that have already been used quite a bit, those are the ones to use, I think. Um, you know, these, you know, have, have um, paint built up in the bristles and around the base. And, um, you know, the, the bristles are really stiff. They're, you know, some are synthetic hair, some are ha um, hog hair. Um, they can be used for oils and acrylics. Um, you know, both are fine. Um, and um, there are also various brands. You know, this one, it's a Dick Blick brush. Um, this one, you know, just says artist craftsman. So it's really, you know, a cheap brush, a no-name brand. Um, and this, this would really be a fine choice, I think, for a painting like this. And that's because, I'll just kind of demonstrate here a little bit, I mean, you can just smash it in. And now this brush is a little wet still from cleaning it off last night, but I mean, I can just, you know, and I, I don't, I don't worry about, um, what I'm doing to the brush, whether or not it's going to damage it or anything like that. And so that's, you know, that's of primary importance with a painting like this. Um, so this one, you know, this is a Liquitex brush, 
and it's just, it's been used a lot. Um, it's still in good condition. You know, I, I do my best to take good care of these brushes um, and any brush that I have. I still have all of, you know, the first brushes I started with, like, almost 20 years ago now. Um, and actually, you know, this is one of them right here. This, this very small, small brush. Um, but this, you know, this doesn't even have a branding or any printing on it. And it's, it's really the most, um, you know, stiff bristles. And they can tend to come out a little bit, um, you know, and get, maybe get stuck in the paint or something like that. Uh, but once again, this kind of painting is not about perfection. And, um, you know, having a few bristles in there, that sort of thing, different textures in the paint, I think is actually, you know, a good thing. It gives it, um, it gives it character. <laughs> and the more character, the better, in my opinion, with something like this. Um, you know, letting it be and allowing it. Um, that's all part of it. And um, so, you know, I really wanted to show you how um, these are the tools that I like the most for this kind of work. Um, and I don't think, you know, you don't need a lot. Um, really, even like three different ones would work. Um, but I think this range, these four that I have here, is really a good range because you can just, you can get all kinds of textures and, um, you know, marks from these that uh, will create a dynamic piece and will give you all the variety that you may, you know, that you may desire in, um, in creating something like this. So those are the brushes. Um, there's also, you know, the way that I'm mixing um, my paint for this. Now, I'm mixing it a little bit thin, um, and the way that I'm doing that, and, um, you know, I'll describe that to you in a moment, but really the reason for it is actually because, you know, if I, if I had squeezed out paint um, from the tube and used it, you know, say it's heavy body paint, um, that paint's not going to spread out very much. It's not going to stain the canvas very much. And it would take a lot of paint to cover a canvas like this. And quite honestly, you know, that would be expensive. And once again, um, you know, it's, I think that's, that's unnecessary. Um, and in a way, I think, you know, really, ultimately, that's going to get in the way of the creative flow. What I've found is when my paint is a bit fluid and can even be spread out to stain the canvas and be a bit transparent, that that really allows the painting to move fast. And um, so that enables this aspect of instant gratification with the painting and um you know how i i talked about that in my last video how that is one of the ways that i receive therapy from my paintings like this is in achieving or allowing instant gratification and so that's another one of the really important steps um, in the process to doing that, um, to achieving that, and to making an energetic painting. And so how I mix my paint, you know, I squeeze out um, an amount on my, you know, on my, my palette here. Um, I wouldn't say it necessarily has to be a whole lot. I would encourage even kind of experimenting with that and playing with that yourself to see what works for you. You know, it, it'll be different for, um, for each person and um, depending on how large the canvas is that you're working on. Um, but once I've squeezed out a bit of paint, um, 
you know, I'll, I'll figure out, you know, sometimes I'll squeeze paint from, you know, four different tubes even to make a color. Um, I think it can be, you know, helpful visually sometimes to have the colors be a little bit mixed and muted. And so that's what I do. Um, you know, I, I, I squeeze out a little bit of paint from each tube. And, um, you know, for me, I, I've learned a lot about color theory and mixing paint. And that's something I'll get into in another video, actually. Um, I'd really like to share more about that and in encourage the exploration of color and the understanding of color more so it becomes intuitive for you while you're mixing your paint. That can be very helpful um, as well to, um, you know, both visually and in terms of being in the creative flow. And so once I've mixed my color, I add some water to that color. And for me, um, the mixture of water to paint, I found is around 20 parts paint to one part water. So really it's not, you know, you don't need a whole lot of water to make the paint become more fluid. Um, and once again, I would also recommend playing with that, experimenting with that, and, you know, the more, you know, to find what works for you best and what you enjoy the most. Um, um, but, um, you know, once, once I've, I've mixed the water in, um, you know, I found that that will, that will allow the staining and spreading of the paint just to such a degree that you can really create, you know, large surface areas of color and paint, um, <laughs> or, you know, color <laughs> or paint without, um, you know, really having to use that much paint. Um, so, you know, all of these different areas here, like these blacks or these, these whites, and this color really came from, you know, a very small amount of paint compared to what you might expect um, if you were just using unmixed heavy bodied or unthinned heavy bodied paint just straight from the tube. So the third component to this process is a medium. And the medium can act as an extender. Um, it will it will make your um, you know, your, your paints, um, go much further and, um, you know, makes it a little bit more economical, um, and also transparent. So this is, you know, this is the, um, the medium I use. This is made by Golden and this is a fluid matte medium. Um, so it leaves a flat finish and, the reason I like the matte medium, the flat finish, is because it reflects less light. So a glossy medium will make your paint um, quite glossy and it will dry quite glossy and that will reflect the light. Um, so, you know, today is a bright sunny day. I've got my windows open and the light is shining on the canvas here and you know you can probably see the shadow so you can see there's you know there's quite a bit of light coming in through the windows um and if, if this was glossy paint there would be bright light spots that would almost look like this white here and so that can be you know that can be pretty um distracting and um, misleading to the eye, you know, to not see just exactly what, um, you know, what the paint's doing um, and, um, you know, how the paint is working in the composition. If you have a lot of light reflecting in there, um, that, you know, that's going to maybe seem like there's, there's paint where there's not or something like that. So, you know, that's what, that's what I prefer. And um, that's what works for me, um, you know, to really get into the visual aspect of the painting and to be 
more present with it. And, um, you know, this technique of mixing the paint and the brushes that I use all allow a creative flow that I feel is, um, you know, what enables me to get into the meditative process with these energetic paintings. And so that's what I wanted to share with you today, these tools and techniques. And I'll be back with more soon. And as well, I'd like to invite you and encourage you to leave any questions and comments that you may have. You know, I will answer them as soon as I can and as best as I can. And I would really love to, you know, to know, um, you know, what you think. And um, if there are, you know, any things that you would like me to explore and explain with you, I would be, you know, it would be my great joy to be able to share, um, you know, any experience and to answer any questions that you may have. So you can leave questions and comments in the comment box below. And um, I'd just like to wish you a wonderful day. I hope you have a chance to be creative. And if you're feeling the need to use that as art therapy. And, um, you know, I, I hope that that can ease your mind if that's what's needed. And, um, you know, I just want to wish you a wonderful day again <laughs> for the second time. <laughs> and I do thank you for watching and um, have a blessed day. Thank you very much.